Hello and welcome. I am your host, JP John Paz from the Two Man Power Trip. Of course, joining me, the former WW and ECW World Tag Team Champion, one of the greatest minds and bookers ever in the history of the business, the games master, the taskmaster, the devil himself, Mr. Kevin Sullivan. Kevin, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine, JP. How are you, my man? Doing good. We were just kind of saying all fair. It's been cold, colder than it's been in, in a long time uh, around here. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in Florida, it's been rain, too, and cold. I mean, it's been like in the 50s and cold for a week. It's crazy out there. I'm not sure what's going on, but I, I remember a few years ago, it was absolutely this cold. But all of a sudden, damn, we had a nice December, and then January comes up, and it's absolutely freezing. kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But today I want to talk about a great subject, somebody that uh, you obviously knew how to book, and maybe Vince McMahon did not, but we'll get into that later. But the total package Lex Luger, what an interesting kind of um, career he's had. I mean, he was in the NFL. He was basically one of those guys. He just looked like a million dollars, looked like a Greek god. When did you first, excuse me, first meet um, the total package Lex Luger? I met Lex before he broke in the business. We was training with Heroet at 106 North Albany. And what did you think of him then? Oh, he looked terrific, but he didn't look anything like he was ripped as uh, he was at the end of his career. He was nowhere near as ripped. I mean, that guy, his body was impeccable. Uh, crazy how it transpired with him. It's really crazy. Yeah, he had that, that football body at first, obviously. You know, former Green Bay Packer. He had that great body to him. Just looked like, you know, he's built of stone. But then he got just completely jacked. He might have, you know, eventually had the best body ever in wrestling, right? Do you think, that, when you think of him, do you think of probably maybe the best body ever? Uh, <clears throat> symmetrically, yes. But. To me, superstar Billy Graham put wrestling on a different level. Lex was great, but he wasn't the first. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yep. He was great. I mean, he probably was better than, but, you know, Lex, Scott, Steiner, and superstar Billy Graham. You don't get much better than that, do you? No, definitely, definitely not. And it's funny, I was just watching an old match somebody had posted yesterday. Uh, superstar, right after he won the WF title, he was fighting Gorilla Monsoon at, at Madison Square Garden, and the crowd was going nuts. They thought Gorilla was going to win the title because he was the replacement for the rematch with Bruno. So, like, oh, he's got to be winning the title. The crowd was going nuts, but Superstar looked like, whew. He looked like somebody off of, like, uh, Matt Olympus or something. He just looked awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he won the most muscular in that contest. He won the uh, best arms. He won uh, the weight class, tall weight class for the Miss America. I mean, he looked incredible. There's that picture of him. In New York City, we doing uh, chest and uh, arm pose on a fire hydrant. Do you know which one I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yes, yes, yep. One of the wildest photos I've ever seen in a bodybuilder show. Unbelievable. Incredible. 
Yeah. As far as far as Luger, obviously we know he made a name for himself in college football ranks, playing for Miami. He's on a pretty awesome team with uh, Jim Burt, the legendary uh, New York Giant, uh, Jim Kelly, Fred Marion, Frank Richt. I mean, he was on a pretty stacked team there. He played for the CFL. He played a little bit for the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, he played for Memphis, Jacksonville, and Montreal as well. As far as just some other football leagues, but he didn't make it in football. Trains with Hiro Matsuda and gets into wrestling, starts with Championship Wrestling from Florida, and that's where you first see him. Did you ever think when you were looking at him, like, uh, ex-football player, this guy's going to be a world champion? Or you're just like, ah, eh, he was going to be in it for for a minute, he's going to look great, but he won't last. Like, What were your thoughts on that? Uh, I, he, he was so impressive. It was hard to say, well, he's not going to make it at all. He was so, so impressive. Uh, his body was, oh, uh, there were some people walking around in gyms anywhere in the country that looked like him at that time. Yeah, he was bigger than Arnold Schwarzenegger, technically. If you really look at it, he's taller and he, and he weighed more than Arnold. And yeah. Arnold's huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, he was, he was, uh, he was in the golden age of bodybuilding with Dave Draper, Lou Ferrigno, uh, who else? Arnold. Uh, Frank Zane, Billy Graham. I mean, that was a, at that time, that was the crumb, the crumb of the guys. Big time. And with Luger in championship wrestling in Flor from Florida, I think the big thing with him there, and I think everybody remembers, is that Bruiser Brody cage match, right? Were you there at that point when he has that cage match with Brody? Yeah. You know, that was the first night I booked, came back and booked, but I was still in Pensacola finishing that angle up. No, but uh, Bill Alfonso was a dear friend of mine, told me all the stories. I mean, from the horse's mouth, you know. So what happened there? What happened with Brody? Frank had this strange thing. I had seen him do this with Mark Lewin. Uh, I work, I told you, I worked with Frank probably a hundred times. 10% of the time I was the baby face when I first started. And if he didn't like how things were going, if he liked you, he wasn't going to beat you up. He just was going to make the match suck. He was laying in the corner, you know what I mean? He would sit on the corner, the second corner, and let you hit him, and then he'd hit you. He, he, he had something weird about it. And he, he would get something in his head and did it with Luger that night and Luger panicked and I don't blame him. He thought he was going to get killed and he crawled out of the ring. Yeah, crawled. he got the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, he got uh, out of the top. Now I've had two different things that he waited for Frank. Fonzie tells me there's no way he waited for Frank. He got the hell out of there. He didn't even shower. I believe, wow. I believe what Fonzie would say would be sullen. Right, and it was he gets over the top rope of the cage or over yeah. uh, on the top yeah. rope. Then he climbs the cage to get the hell out right. of there to leave the match. Brody just basically wasn't cooperating, right? And Luger didn't know like kind of what to do. He's kind of a rookie still at this point. Yeah, yeah, Ex exactly. He just didn't know what to do. You know, he, he, 
Here's the problem that looks at. And I had great respect for Lex Luger because he started on top. He didn't have 10 matches before he was on top. So he had a hard way to go. And it was very hard to start that way. You're supposed to be calling the match. You're supposed to be underlining how the match was going. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's basically a baby in the business, right? I mean, you usually don't get good or get su successful maybe for a few years in the business if you're lucky. Sometimes, like Steve Austin or, or franchise Shane Douglas, it took him seven years to get you know real good and understand and be able to call matches and stuff like that. So it's one of those things with Luger, maybe too much too soon just because of his look. Yeah, and the thing about it is. He looks so good, Luger. Where could you put him? You couldn't put him on the first match, could you? No. So he was blowing everything out of the water. He couldn't get beat because he probably didn't know how to get beat. Do you know what I'm saying? It was a tough, tough road for him to hoe. But I never had a problem with him. He never refused me for doing a job later on when he was polished. That angle I gave him when he was, you know, good guy, bad guy at the same time. He yep. was a bull bullshitter. I thought he'd play that. As well as anybody in the country could have played it at the same time. Oh, I love that with Sting. Where Sting is a babyface, clearly the top babyface in the company. Luger is his tag team partner. They're tag champs. But he's also playing a heel with Jimmy Hart and cheating. And Sting doesn't realize what's going on because that's his best friend. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't be friends with this asshole. You know what I mean? But he was so good at it. He would smile with Sting, shake a fan's hands. Then when Sting turned his back, he'd pull his hands away and like wipe his hands off and say, oh, don't touch me. <laughs> He hit uh, Booker T and Stevie Ray with the, the roller quarters. And then to Sting, he said, I don't know where that came from. That wasn't me. And Sting would believe him. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw that the other day. They played he, that off very well. He was almost too good at, at sometimes playing babyface. And he'll, like, they always had him kind of switching. Before really the NWO comes before that he was switching a lot, baby face and heel, like in his JCP and then WCW run early, uh, well, late 80s, really early 90s. They kind of had him doing that. He was so good at, to me at playing both the baby face and playing the heel. Yeah, I mean, he, he did a hell of a job. He did a hell of a job. When you guys lose, well, not you guys, but Florida loses Luger after the Brody thing, he ends up in JCP. Obviously, Flair wrestled him at Battle of Belts 3, so he's very familiar with Lex Luger. You've seen Lex Luger. He knows Luger. Is Flair the one that brings him to JCP and brings him into the NWA for Jim Crockett? I think the world champion or give it a little bit of room to to talk to guys about their home territory. You know what I mean? When you finish up here, you know, you could go to, to Crockett or you could go to Detroit or you could go to Amarillo or anywhere, you know what I mean? Where other guys would get heat. They never got that. When you're looking at Flair and you're know, probably him bringing him into um, 
the NWA, bringing him into JCP. He comes in, he's quote unquote an associate of the horseman. Then the horsemen turn on Ole Anderson, he you know, and, and kick him out of the group, and Luger becomes a member of the four horsemen. Do you like Luger as a horseman? Because it seems to fit that group perfectly. Yeah. I mean, it was a good group. It was one of the best groups I've ever seen. With Luger in it, you think? Or with, or you like the Oli version better? Or you like the Barry version better? Uh, all of them. All of them were, were, were just unique in their own way, you know? I mean, we all have a favorite one. But... Um, really did them damage. Do you know what I mean? Oh, they were great. They were awesome. I, I, I love mean, the one with Barry, but yeah. the one with Luger is great as well. Yeah, and I love the one with Barry. I, I love Barry. Uh, the only uh, Tully uh, Tully and Rick were fabulous. Uh, you know. Yeah, they were awesome. I, I was going to say, I didn't mean to cut you off. Occasionally, do you remember when they would throw in uh, like clips from the show started uh, the the uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling and they'd yep. be downstairs outside in the limo in their suits with JJ and they just added class and then when Oli was there and Barry was there. It just had a, a different layer of toughness. Yep, totally agree. Totally agree. Definitely did. Luger was an interesting one because he's like the rookie, but you could tell he's the one maybe with the most potential to be the breakout star. So that was an interesting thing with him because not only – is he thrust in the group? They they take out Oli. He becomes U.S. champion. Holds a U.S. title for a while. Beats Nikita Koloff for it. So like obviously you know there's big plans for him. He's a part of War Games, the first War Games matches, which becomes huge. Hell, they still use him today in the WWE. So I mean, he became a part of, of some big things. The Horseman, War Games, U.S. champion. He had quite a nice run for sure. Uh, at just even to start in JCP. Yeah, it was. Uh... You know, he doesn't get enough credit that he deserves. You know, he was a guy that could play wide receiver, uh, running back, and middle linebacker. Three of the toughest positions, I believe, anyway. And he, he could use those. So, to the best of his ability. For sure. He even is the NWA tag team champion with Barry Windham. Then Windham eventually turns on him and, and he adjoins the horseman. And then Luger turns babyface and Luger is going to feud with Flair a little bit. Did you think it was too soon to, to maybe pull the trigger in 88 on, on Luger winning the world championship over the Nature Boy? <sighs> winning. Yes, wrestling him, no. It helped him. I mean, wrestling him, he's wrestling, you know, the nature boy. I thought it was brilliantly done. He is looking strong in law in the loss. I mean, the, you know, Flair is still cheating to win, right? So that doesn't really hurt him, per se. Yeah, I mean, he was injured and 
some of the matches they had jumped them and he can didn't call the match off it wrestled them you know what i mean yep. he fought he fought three of them off and he almost won matches you know what i mean yep and the blood stops one of the matches so he should have won the title but the blood yeah. stopped it yep yeah, and that made sense because they had seen that for 50 years in Baltimore. Yep. Yep. So it wasn't we just plucked it out of our ass, you know. Yep. So. And then JCP sells to Turner and Luger is still top stars. So it doesn't matter if there's new ownerships. Luger is still one of the top stars. He fights Flair again, the main event, Starkey 88, doesn't win the title again. But eventually he'll become U.S. champ again, and then have a very, very long uh, run with the with the U.S. title. Few with Stan Hansen in between a little bit there. So you could see he's still he's main event or upper main event. He's still moving up the card, not quite ready for the world title. But once Flair is gone, goes to the WWF, Luger will become WCW champion. He'll he'll win over Barry Windham. He'll win that title at Great American Bash. Do you think that he should have won the title earlier or no? It, it's it's hard. Yeah, probably. The reason why I hesitated. Lex was hard to work with. I mean, you're always on your toes. Do you know what I mean? And the situation they were in was they were behind us and falling way behind us. And they needed to have exciting matches, not pound and ground and grueling matches like they did have. Yeah. And when you look at Luger too, never known as like a great worker, quote unquote, or the work rate, he's great. But to me, he was a good worker because the crowd was into everything he was doing. Whether you think he's believable or not, everyone in the crowd thought he was very believable just because of his look. Uh, his, you know, not to say he's a great seller, but his selling sometimes got over big time. Um, just the way he kind of just handles himself. Some of the moves that he would hit, you could tell like simple power moves, but it just looks extra, extra effective when a guy is that big. But I just felt like the work rate thing because he could work with steamboat and steamboat was saying luger was calling those matches and those matches were great so yes he's working with steamboat but people don't realize he's the one calling he's working with pillman he's having awesome matches he's working with hans he's having awesome matches so i feel like that work rate thing with him is i don't know uh maybe overstated i feel like he's definitely a good worker or was i do too uh i think he got it the wrestling business, the hottest part of the wrestling business he got right off the bat, the psychology, you know, I mean, that, that role he played, good guy, bad guy, do you know what I mean? Where he was a baby face at, in one segment and a heel in a different one. That's very difficult to do, as you know. And yet he pulled it off. So uh, I think he did a great, great job. And the thing I love about him, you know when they say the airport test, like if, if you see a wrestler walking through an airport, some guys today, unfortunately, are so small, you, you wouldn't even think he was a wrestler or like they don't have charisma, they don't have that look. But guys like Lex Luger, like the Hulk Hogan, obviously you see him walking through the airport, holy shit, there's Hogan. You know what I mean? You may yeah. not know at first that it's Lex Luger, be like, that guy's a wrestler or that guy is important. Like they always said, well, like when he walked into a room, everyone's eyes kind of shifted to him. He had that charisma and he had that look that's like, holy shit, who is this guy? This guy is, he's built, he's a Greek god. He just looks like he's somebody important. Yeah. And uh, like you just said, you may not know his name. You may have come from Brazil, never seen a wrestling product on TV, but you know he was somebody. 
He does end up winning the title. Like I said, he has t- a title reign and title defenses against Rick Steiner, Masahiro Chono, Lex, uh, excuse me, Ron Simmons, all good feuds for Lex Luger for sure. He ends up eventually losing the WCW world title at Super Bowl two to sting good match there. Perfect guy to lose it to, but that's the interesting part. So he's losing the title, but he's only losing the title really because he's leaving. He's leaving the organization. He can't wrestle for WWF basically for a year. So he ends up going to the World Bodybuilding Federation in 1992 after leaving the WCW. What did you think about that? That's kind of a bold and odd move, no? Odd choice. Uh, Yes and no. Yes, because that's not usually the way you, you do it, that you take a year off and then come in, wrestle, and win it like the first month in. But it got, gave him a chance to sit and watch guys and talk to guys. So I think it was good for him. And he does make an appearance on WrestleMania 8, but it was just with Heenan and Gorilla to promote him coming out for the WBF, the World Bodybuilding Federation. He was even going to be a part of Body Stars and all their pay-per-views and this and that. So Vince definitely took a liking to him. Vince is obviously a huge body guy. He loves those gigantic, yeah. you know, uh, those those big muscle-bound guys, of course. And Luger had that perfect look and all the charisma in the world. So he was really st- basically maybe going to be a guest poser. He was going to be a host, all this other stuff, but he does get injured in the motorcycle accident. So by the time he recovers from the motorcycle accident, the WBF is already out of business. So it, it looks like an odd choice. Cause it's like, man, he couldn't wrestle for a year. He negotiates way out of WCW. He can't wrestle on TV, but then he does WBF and then gets into the motorcycle accident. So not, not good luck right there. No, It, it would have been better if Lex went, if everything was clear for him that he went from WCW right over and started working for uh, WWF. Don't you think? Yep. Yeah. If he could have, he sh- you know could have jumped right in. It could have been a part of WrestleMania Eight, but obviously WCW blocked that. When he does come back after the accident and after the WBF closes, he's basically an associate of Bobby the Brain Heenan. He's going to be the narcissist Lex Luger, basically going to make his debut with the persona at the Royal Rumble. Shortly thereafter, he's going to have all that stuff added to the gimmick: the mirrors, the the girls holding the mirrors, like the look, the robe, like just the whole appearance of Lex Luger. And they were saying that because this was what they thought that he thought of himself. Do you agree with that? Like he basically the gimmick was true to life in, in a sense. Yeah, I think he would, he played that role as true to life as you could. And it worked for Lex because that's what people thought about him mainly. Definitely. Did you think that he had an attitude problem that he was too cocky and, you know, all the things you hear about Luger? Well, a lot of people did. A lot of people on the outside did. He passed that on. But for me, he was an angel to, 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 uh, to work with. He was not, uh, he was not that difficult to work with, though. What did you think? No, he wasn't. Go ahead. I was going to say, what did you, what did you think of, when he becomes the Lex Express. So they, they take that narcissist gimmick. They say he's a part of that, but but you they lose Hogan. He leaves. So then it's like, okay, we want our next American hero. What do you think about the Lex Express and him doing the all-American gimmick after he body slams Yokozuna on the USS Intrepid? They had us put a lot of thought process in that. 
You know they did. They put a lot of thought process in that. But I, how, how do you put that much time and effort into it and not pull the trigger? I just don't get that. Yeah, how come he doesn't win the world title at SummerSlam 1993? He beats Yoko, but he beats him by countdown. I mean, that's just terrible. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't buy that at all. And they even do a test run. Like, he comes out with the belt randomly on, like, a, on, a, on a taping, but they don't film it as far as for TV. They just want to see the crowd's reaction. And the crowd is not like thrilled with it it's just like almost they're more confused than anything like i don't even know why they tried it but it's supposed to be an attempt by vince to see how the crowd re would react if he was the champion well i think it caused more problems don't you um, yeah I don't, I don't know apparently he had some attitude issues but bruce Pritchard was saying vince basically thought that he wasn't getting over with the audience like like he would have wanted like he would expect it like he wanted him to fill the hogan shoes that's pretty big shoes to fill yeah, and you want to see if he's he's going to get over. You know, Hogan, in all honesty, was not over in Florida like Dusty was. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, some guys in certain areas. Yeah, like Luger yeah. not as over in the north as, I guess, northeast as he was in the south. He wasn't as over as Junkyard Dog was in in Louisiana. Right. It was a few guys. Not many, but a few. But to do that and try that out didn't make any sense at all to me. Yeah, if you're going to go all the way, go all the way with him because then he feuds with Ludwig Borga, eventually is the co-winner of the 1994 Royal Rumble with Bret Hart, which means that he faces Yokozuna first, and then Bret's going to face that winner later on the night. Luger loses to Yoko, and then Yoko loses to Bret, and Bret becomes the man, which kind of then just puts Luger in the background. They tease a little feud with Tatanka, and they have a feud. Then they have the Allied Powers with uh, Davey Boy Smith as a tag team partner. And it's just, it just doesn't work after that. And, and and then he's gone, which then leads to something great. Him just randomly showing up on the first Nitro during Sting and Flair's match and really kind of set the world on fire because he was literally in WWF over the weekend. It was only a handshake deal. Bruce Pritchard didn't handle the contract properly. You guys get the notice. I guess Sting gives you guys the heads up. And you guys bring him in. So did you bring him in or did Bischoff bring him in? Eric brought him in. What did you think about it? Because you know you're you're booking it. He the Dungeon of Doom thing is going on, and he just fits in perfectly with Sting, and he's going to challenge Hogan right off the bat. Yeah, I thought it was he was brilliant. I mean, how, how do you not want a guy like uh, the Hot Man? I mean, he's 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 one of the great workers that generation. Why wouldn't you want him if you get a chance to get him? And Ted would has a chance to put some money out there to pay for him. I thought it was brilliant. And the funny part is he comes back, he agrees to like 150 a year or whatever the amount is, I believe it was 150, which is basically way less of what he was making the first time around five years or three years ago in WCW. So he even accepted to do it on less money to kind of just prove all the doubt was wrong to prove that he could be the top star there. And just to kind of prove that whatever happened at WWF was really not his fault. And he was right because man, as soon as he's there, he's over. He's one of the most over guys in WCW. So I felt like you knew how to book him. And I just, I don't know. I feel like Vince never got behind him and never could book him properly. Uh, I think he, there was something in, Hey, I'm not one to question Vince. I mean, look what he's done in the rest of the business. But he might have had a little bit of phobia of pushing a guy that 
wasn't as big as Hogan or Warren and Sid and The Undertaker and those people, you know what I mean? Hmm. He might have been saying, oh, I, I really can't get behind this. That's all I'm thinking. With him and WCW, obviously, I mean, there's there's many things. We were talking about the babyface heel thing. He's basically with Jimmy Hart, who's with the Dungeon Doom, who's having an alliance to end Hulkamania, but he's also with Sting. He's a tag team partner, tag team champion. He's a babyface. So there's there's that give and take of him being a babyface and heel, which is one of the best storylines and just absolutely perfection on his part, the way he does it. He helps WCW in one aspect against New Japan Pro Wrestling, helping them win the, the World Cup of Wrestling at Stargate. Right. And then, you know, then he's he's feuding with the Dungeon of Doom and helping Sting and Hogan and Macho Man and the Hulkamaniacs against the Dungeon, but then by accident hits Hogan, but was it really an accident? Or excuse me, he, he by accident hits Savage, and that's our feud with Savage, but it was like, was it really an accident? Because there's an awesome part in the match where people are like, oh, what a screw-up. It wasn't a screw-up. It was perfect. He could have stopped, and he doesn't stop himself, right. and, he hits him, and he hits him anyway. It was yeah. literally done perfectly because then you're like, wait a second. Is he an asshole? Why didn't he just stop? He he kept going. He could have stopped. It was perfectly done because it just made you question him again. Wait, is he good or is he bad? It's just really, really well done. Yes, yes. He played that role impeccable. I mean, he was super on that. Incredible. And then, of course, when the NWO comes, he's definitely going to be a babyface. But when Bash of the Beach happens, when it's the outsiders and that third man, that mystery man against Sting, Savage, and Luger, and Luger gets hurt during the match, you almost think like, oh, man, maybe maybe Luger's the third guy with these guys. Maybe he's the heel. Because you never could trust Luger. And then all of a sudden, Hogan comes out, and obviously Luger's injured. He gets brought to the back. But Hogan comes out, and, and it obviously changes the game and changes wrestling forever by joining the NWO, which we've talked about. It's in the archives. We've talked about it on a few different episodes with Hogan and with the NWO. But it's great to see Luger is now going to be cemented as the baby face, and he's really going to stick with Sting this time. And he's really going to have a big-time feud with the outsiders. So him as a baby face work too, because you could say Sting was the most over guy. Luger may be one a during the NWO period because he was mega over. Yeah. And the other thing was, uh, he was, he, he, he was over so well with that gimmick. You didn't know if he was ribbon a bullshit or what you didn't know what you could take of him truthfully right yep oh he did a wonderful job and then just fast forwarding a little bit because you know he's feuding with macho man again scott hall kevin nash he's basically feuding a, a, for a while with the nwo has a great showing of world war three i mean he's just putting himself up there in the upper echelon. And when people say, oh, the NWO dominated, I know Luger had had some big time wins over them. I know him and, and Giant technically win the titles and they get to, you know, puts them back because he had the injury and he used the injured cast to win one of the matches against the outsiders of Super Bowl. But he still, he was getting wins o over the NWO. He wasn't looking bad. They were kind of beating him seven on one at some point, six on one. It, it was it was basically kind of designed to make Luger look like a very strong babyface, which then makes his title shot on that Nitro, that big Nitro 100, 8-4-97. It made that so much more impressive because you thought, okay, they're going to screw him again. He's going to lose. Um, there's no way he's going to win the title. And guess what? WWE Nitro, 8497. Man, what, what a freaking match. I just love it. The crowd is absolutely nuts. He beats Hollywood Hogan and he wins the title. I mean, what a moment. Maybe the best moment of his career. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it made him a very complex individual where you didn't know where you really stood with them. And I think that was a good thing. Having a guy where you didn't know if you really liked him or hated him. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. But man, he that in in Detroit or whatever for that night they 
they freaking i mean they loved him that night when he when he won the yeah. title that that was that was epic that's one of those uh very very memorable moments probably uh never never to be forgotten but i think it's the biggest uh, win of his career he obviously at road wild over the weekend a few days later less than a week later hogan wins the title back but like we've talked about before on the show that was designed so everybody orders the pay-per-view hogan loves those pay-per-view points you know getting some extra right. money in his pocket but that was perfect for the pay-per-view because i know me as a fan i was dying to see that next pay-per-view View because I want to know if Hogan was going to win the title back or not. He's shocking and lost it on Nitro. So really right. good job for Hogan and, and making money for business and really good job on Hogan too, because he hand selected Luger, right? He was the one that said he wanted Luger to beat him. Yep. He did do that. He hand selected him. He, he wanted uh, Luger to be the, the champ, you know, I'll be a, a short reign, but that just goes to show you, I mean, Hogan all about business. There's pretty smart. Yeah, it was really smart. For this point. Yep. So through ninety, the end of ninety seven, I mean, he's going to feud with, uh, and and obviously into ninety eight too, he's going to feud with Savage, he's going to feud with Buff, a lot of different things. Eventually, something I don't really like. He ended up joining the NWO Wolfpack. I know they were supposed to be like the babyface group of the NWO. Sting joined it too. I just felt Savage eventually. I just felt like he didn't belong in the Wolfpack. The real Wolfpack is Hall Nash and Six. I just, I don't know. I just felt like. That Wolfpack, I didn't like him. Did you like Luger in the NWO? No. I, I think it just watered down. It watered down. Uh, it got, the Wolfpack got too large. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, got yeah, definitely. Large. And that's what hurt it. It just got too large. Uh um, I used to say, how do you have these guys that are in the NWO, but didn't just walk over? They've been here for a while, and they've been under contract for WCW. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. I don't like. Just, didn't like that at all. It didn't make sense. Didn't make sense. So, and then basically, eventually, he'll join like that NWO elite, which is basically Hogan, Hall, Nash, Steiner, him himself, yeah. and Buff, and he'll be in another reincarnation of the NWO, and and few of Rey Mysterio and Conan a little bit with Goldberg as well. Eventually, he and Flair will have a team uh, of team package. They'll have a team together. Eventually, totally buff with Luger and Buff would have a tag team together. I don't know. It felt like Luger almost got lost in the shuffle a little bit. I know WWE had so many main eventers and so many top stars. Do you feel like I know you're kind of in and out booking as well? You feel like he was getting lost in the shuffle here a bit? Yeah, I thought the whole thing was getting lost in the shuffle. I mean, you couldn't keep a scorecard. Who was who anymore? Too much. I mean, yep. It got to be really, really too much. Like he's a heel, he's a baby face. I mean, they they turned him a lot. He was feuding with Sting, then he was teaming with Sting. Then when yep. Bischoff was towards the end of his run in '99, like Luger and Sting are a heel unit. Then Russo comes in a month later, and he's back, kind of like almost not like teasing being a baby face. Then he turns on Sting, and Sting turns baby face. It was just a uh, I don't know one of those things where yes, yeah, Sting and Luger, it's an easy thing and an easy feud and, and easy to get people behind because they love those two guys, whether they're feuding or teaming. But it felt like it's been done there a, a million times. It just felt like I don't know Luger going back and forth too much. And then when Russo comes back again, they do the Millionaires Club against the New Blood. Luger's a baby face again, and you know he's feuding with Chuck Palumbo and Stasiak, and and it just. I know I just yeah. wasn't feeling it. It was almost too much flip flopping for Lex Luger. It was too much flip flop. You're absolutely right. He so ends much. up he ends up um fighting Booker T when Booker T's the champ. Obviously he's the heel, loses the Booker. He ends up having a, a two month long feud with Goldberg, which was actually pretty good. Um I really enjoyed that feud, but it's one of those things where I don't know, maybe you didn't think Goldberg was, was gonna lose to Luger, but I don't know, something good for Luger to do. Uh, in the meantime, something good for Goldberg to do before they kind of were do you know wanted to go a different direction with Goldberg. But then, shockingly, Goldberg at WW Sin teams up with Dwayne Bruce, aka Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker, and totally buff of Luger and Buff ends up beating them and ending Goldberg's 
career, quote unquote, in WCW. So it went from like, okay, Luger's feuding with him to then Luger is basically um, responsible for ending Goldberg's WCW career. So in one aspect, it's good, but I just didn't see where that was going and why that needed to happen for Goldberg. I know he was injured, but it just felt like um, odd booking there from uh, from Johnny Ace. Yeah, I thought it was too. Like he loses his career, but in a tag match, and he's tagging with Dwayne Bruce. It was strange booking. And I know we've talked about that in the past episode. If anybody wants to look it up in the archive, WWE Sin 2001. But just a strange way to kind of just be there. And, and he's in the Magnificent Seven with Flair and Buff and Animal and Steiners um, and Jeff Jarrett. So there's a there's a big faction there that, that he's in at the end of WCW. But then WCW goes away. And kind of Luger goes away. So his end of WCW run wasn't kind of what it could have or should have been, given the star power he had. Yeah, and he was just picking up star power then, really. Uh, star power, power was sticking to him, really, at that period. And then WCW's over. And, and they mention him. Vince mentions him in a promo on WWF TV. So you're thinking, oh, maybe he'll get Luger. Obviously, there is still ill will there from him just literally walking out on him and going to WCW and spending six years in WCW. So Vince obviously wasn't going to bring him in. There was a lot of heat there. Um, he just absolutely, you know, he absolutely just hated Luger. Luger uh, on World Wrestling All-Stars in 2002, he wrestled there, which was over in, in a bunch of different countries, whether it be England or, or or Switzerland and Australia, they were just all over the place. He was one of the mainstays there. He does make a few appearances for TNA for total nonstop action, but never really kind of picked it up again, if you will, as far as, as being that, that main event guy that we knew from the late eighties and from the nineties. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right that, you know, it was like, the comment faded out quickly. And then if you add in some of the, the legal issues, obviously the, the death of Miss Elizabeth and him being there, and, and we know about the, the 911 call and everything else that he was there, that also adds to the fact that WWF wouldn't want to bring him in or wouldn't want to use him either because it's like, man, this guy's a mess right now. He needs to clean himself up. So that, right. I mean, that was huge too. I mean, and, and just a horrible situation with Miss Elizabeth. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And then his health became an issue. I know he would still wrestle on basically 2007-ish, and his health became a huge issue, right? Spinal issues, back issues, and ended up in a wheelchair. Shocking to see that guy, you know, you know, fall from grace, if you will, but really have all those physical issues. Oh, I agree with you 100%. Uh Whoever would have thought Lex would have ended up wheelchair like he did? Nobody. Yeah, just uh, what a, what a shame. But when you look at him, I don't know he has got, got that. I guess you would call it a spinal infraction. He just had that issue with with his nerve infringement. It just was a big issue. So he ended up in a wheelchair and he ended up in poor health. But man, his attitude is so much different now. I know. Um, it, born again, found God, but man, he's one of the nicest guys. I interviewed him a few years ago, met him in person a few times, man, he's one of the nicest guys uh, you could meet. Were you shocked at the, the turnaround in the attitude of Luger? Uh, God can do some amazing things. So, uh, he had nowhere to go, but up, he couldn't keep going down. Yeah. Uh, he wouldn't have been around. You, know. you think he should be in the WWE Hall of Fame? Uh, do I think? Yes. But legally, that's going to be a high one to get by those, that corporation, especially now. I don't know. I feel like he maybe this year could be the year that he deserves. I mean, deserves it. Jeez, definitely deserves it. But maybe this year is the year that he finally gets in. Hopefully, because so. maybe. No, you don't think so? No, especially right now. I saw they put a hold. Did you see that on buying stocks? You know? Yeah. Yep. 
So, you know, with something like that, they don't know what he definitely deserves to be in. But with something like that, where you don't know what could happen, you know, they're not going to put him in a belief. What do you think is the legacy of Lex Luger? I think his legacy is that he withstood a horrible disaster and came back. Came back. That would have got a lot of people unwound. He did an amazing job. to me, has to be considered one of the all-time greats. Maybe the best body ever. Maybe the best look ever. Charisma through the roof. Former two-time WWE champion. Should have been WWF champion. <laughs> to me, one of the all-time greats. With that bar none. Deserves a shot in the WWE, or spot in WWE Hall of Fame. Maybe it won't happen, but I love those documentaries they did on him, so they do seem like they have a, a decent relationship with him. I just wish that yeah. he was in the Hall of Fame just because he deserves that respect. Yes, he does. I believe that too. And I always go well with Lex. It was easy. That's funny. Uh, you, never, you never know with certain people because they say, oh, he's got bad attitudes. And you're the booker and you got along with him well. So that, that goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. You got to love yeah. Lex. Got to love the total package, Lex Luger. One of the all time greats to me. Yeah. But- but let's uh, wind this one down and head towards the finish. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Two Man Power Trip. Check out the website tmptempire.com. Kevin, what do you got going on in this crazy world? Uh, two weeks from now, I'll be in New York at a virtual signing. Uh, and uh, after that, I'm going to Minneapolis for another signing. So I'm going to be back on the road again. All right. Awesome yeah. stuff. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody out there for listening. See you right back here next time. Have a good one, folks.